So if you are live, please say hello and tell us where you're from. I'm really excited to be here. And we do have a special guest here today. Her name is Victoria Anthony. And we'll be talking to Victoria in just a bit, but let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Deepal Shah, and I help people become pain-free and find their purpose in life. As a medical intuitive, I bring together science and spirituality and use a special technique to help clear the energy so that the body can heal. You can learn more about energy healing and my work on my website at Ananda, A-N-A-N-D-A, -A -A, the number four, life.com. And while you're there, just grab the free stress-free relief guide. I don't know any one person who cannot use that at this time. So grab your free stress-free relief guide. It's got some amazing ancient yogic techniques that will help you get through your stress each and every day. Now, I want to thank um, everyone at this time for all of your support and being here and sharing my work with the world. So I thank all of you for your support. Now, what is going on in the world right now is really challenging for many, and I know I've covered many different videos in helping you find your peace during these times, because it is quite chaotic, and it becomes very chaotic in our mind. And I see that many people are seeking self-improvement and looking at um, self-realization and getting books on what they can do on how to be better people. And it's really nice to see that because, you know, before we didn't have time to do that. You know, now that everybody's quarantined, or most people are, you have all this time on your hands where you can learn how to be with yourself because that's really what we're learning, right? How to be um, not, um, you know, not by ourselves, but with ourselves. Because, you know, right now, I haven't seen my friends in a long time, you know, and, and I haven't, um, the only place I've gone is the grocery store. And it is tough, because I haven't seen my family members. And I'm sure some of you are in the same boat. And it feels like it's creating this pandemic is creating more and more obstacles for us. But what if this pandemic wasn't really an obstacle. What if we could see it differently and see it as a path to something bigger, right? So more and more people are awakening to the self-realization and it brings me to how are we handling our obstacles? How can we take our obstacles and create a positive outlook and a path rather than feeling stuck in them? So basically, I want to ask you, are your obstacles getting in the way of your path? Or are your obstacles the path leading the path to your way? <laughs> I guess you could say it that way. So let me introduce our wonderful guest today, Victoria Anthony, who is a two-time U.S. world team member, two-time U.S. Open champion, two-time junior world champion, and uh, she has been through many obstacles, I am sure, to get to where she is at this um, at this time. You know, she's she's what twenty nine years old, right, Victoria? Yep, and you have accomplished. <laughs> so much, right? 29, right? Yeah, yeah, I am 29. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, right now, you know, as you have been going through getting to where you want to be, I'm sure you went through many, many obstacles. And, um, and so we're going to talk about that. But so grab your coffee, grab your tea, grab your water, whatever it is, and let's talk to Victoria right now. So welcome, Victoria. It's great to have you here today. Yeah, I'm happy to be talking. Such an yeah. important topic. Um, it is. Yeah. It definitely is. So tell, tell us a little bit about you and your journey. Yeah, so I am a women's freestyle wrestler for the United States, and I currently live in Canada and train in Canada um, just because 
one obstacle I faced um, about a year, oh, yeah, about a year ago, was that I wasn't um, getting what I needed out of my training situation for my ultimate goal of becoming Olympic champion um, and making first making the Olympic team. So with that, I just realized there were specific changes I needed to make um, to surmount my overarching obstacle. I mean, I guess it, it's like obstacle is such a funny word because anything can be considered an obstacle. Like making the Olympic team, I mean, it's my goal. And, and in that way, it's like I find goal, intention, obstacle to be um, so intertwined, they can't be separated. And because the obstacle is the way, like you were saying, obstacle is the path to wherever we intend to go and whoever we intend to be. Um, and, and it's like, I think everybody chooses, well, you either choose or you don't choose, but it's a little bit better if you make the choice as to, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, the path that you want to be on, um, because you're going to, you're going to run into obstacles regardless. And it's like, do you allow those to shape you into who you want to be? Do you know who you want to be? Do you know where you're going? Um, and if, if so, it's like beautiful. It's, it's goals. It's, um, surmounting these things. It's climbing mountains. Or if you're not really making the conscious choice, then it's like, um, I don't even know what the word would be <laughs> and the negative version of an obstacle <laughs> right <laughs> you know it feels like you know as children right like when you were young um you know you didn't feel like anything was an obstacle right even if you fell that wasn't an obstacle for you and as you get older you fall and you're like oh my gosh it's the end of the world now my knees are out or this is out or that is out you know and it's so beautiful how kids don't see things as obstacles. And if we changed our perspective on how life runs, right? Because life is a process. And when you can move, the only way to move through life's processes is to just know that it's a process and whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Right. But if we see it as obstacles each and every day, I mean, I could wake up in the morning and be like, oh my gosh, I've got 10 clients today. That's an obstacle, you know, because I usually maybe only have two and the rest of the day I'm swimming in my pool. But, you know, that's not the case, right? Like we go through our day because I remember I used to just get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you would see that certain things become obstacles for us. If we have any form of change becomes a form of obstacle. Do you think, I mean, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think um, it's funny. I just kind of got stuck on the kid note because I, that made me think it's actually just um, pretty much become a conscious awareness of the, the choices to, to view things that like this will make me better. This will help me grow because actually I think kids are just unconscious of the things that are, are happening at, at such a young age, which is why from, you know, what age from birth till seven, um, the things that are happening, like falling down and then the potential, whatever reaction that kid has or whatever reaction their parents have that actually sets them up for later in life, but they're unconscious of that. And I think like just with just realizing that, um, I think the more that we're consciously aware of our, challenges and and make the conscious choice that they this is a lesson this is a lesson for me to go where I want to go like this is happening for me it's not happening to me um and in that way it's like that's really the key to allowing everything to be it's like the key to life it's the key to everything that we you know we want to happen um it's the key to having control over our life and having that um autonomy like taking taking responsibility for the quote-unquote obstacle um because when we take that responsibility, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm in control. Like, I'm driving this car. I'm driving the car that is my life. And, like, your example of um, having 10 different clients. Like, this is me taking responsibility for, you know, these things I'm creating. And, um, and that's, a, that's actually a really, like, the things I'm creating. I, and personally, the way that I've started to choose to see everything that happens in my life, whatever the obstacle may be, I make the conscious choice that I created it, even if it's something that, even if I, um, you know, I, I, I like the other day, I, I came too quickly into the, my parking stall in my underground and I scraped the side of my car, but it's not like that didn't happen to me. I created that situation by a lack of, um, awareness. And when I choose, okay, like this is a lesson moving forward for me to not do this again, I need to be more aware in the situation. And that's, that's apl applicable across the board. Like, and I think, like illness is one thing that people oftentimes feel is happening to them, but 
I'm not going to say it is or it isn't, but I'm going to say the choice that I'll, I'm going to always make in my life from this point forward is like, there's something that I've done to call this in and there's something to be learned and I have the power to correct it because otherwise it's like, I just completely give my power away and um, I'm just like a swirling mass of energy <laughs> that doesn't have control over anything, you know? So it's true. Um, a lot of the points that you made are so true responsibility taking responsibility for our actions basically not blaming other people you know and um when you take that responsibility you can create what you want you know and i feel like you made some really good points there is there like okay so you know everybody defines obstacles differently right like, how do you define it? Because you've been through quite a bit to be, you know, to get to where you want to be. I mean, you've achieved a lot in a short period of time. And so how would you define obstacles? Um, I suppose, I suppose I would like, if I was defining it uh, in the, the like, well-known sense of the word, it would be anything that, um, there's so many ways to think about this. Like it's something exactly. that could be a setback, you know, there's like setbacks or something just to, to surmount and to overcome. It's like something to overcome. That's how I would define an obstacle. And I would also, from the way that I'm choosing to view obstacles and the way that I've chosen to view obstacles in my life is um, I would make obstacles synonymous with lesson and like some, basically something to be learned. So one big obstacle that I experienced uh, was the 2016 Olympic team trials. It's, I made it to the finals of the Olympic team trials, and then I had um, a three-match series against one girl to make the Olympic team. And I was winning the first match, and I ended up losing. And then I won the second match, and I lost the third match. It was, like, very, very, very close. I was, like, this close to making the Olympic team, which is one of my major um, goals in this lifetime, you know? Right. And, but from that, I learned so many irreplaceable lessons. I literally don't think I could be on the path that I'm on right now and be the person that I am right now without that obstacle, without those lessons. I mean, maybe they could have come some other way if I was like less hard headed along the, my path, but I just wasn't. Um, and one thing, one analogy I really like is like, you don't start to walk a path in the forest and then judge your surroundings. You're, like there's a boulder here, there's trees over here. Maybe this path has more trees than the last path you walked, but you don't, you don't start to um, carry a sense of judgment for that. And it's like, I don't, I no longer judge my path or my obstacles or the situation that, um, you know, I pretty much have created. Like I wouldn't, I w I'll never put off that loss on someone else. Like I lost those matches. Nobody right. else lost. It wasn't situational, you know, at the time actually. And this is the big, this is why probably it's like a big turning point for me is like immediately after I want to blame other people and I want to blame other situations. And right. for me to actually achieve my long-term goal of making the Olympic team, becoming Olympic champion, if I put anything off on anyone else, it doesn't allow me to do that. <laughs> I literally prevent myself. So, so yeah, I don't know if that answers the question, but no, I, 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 would, uh, I would say <laughs> I would find obstacles to anything that is to be overcome. Yeah. I, um, you know, it, it's funny because I, before when we were talking, I'm like, gosh, you know, in my life, I've had so many obstacles yeah. that brought me to where I am today. You know, it's like these little moments, these spurts of moments that has um, made me grow, not only intellectually, physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, right? Because you don't just grow in a linear way, right? You're growing like a tree, right? Right. And so it's like, okay, well, these obstacles, where, where are they taking you, you know? And I feel like, yeah, you're right. They are learning lessons. They do have something to teach us. And even if we're finding that, oh my gosh, am, you know, a lot of people find themselves stuck, right? Yeah. And that's what's the scary part about obstacles. If you really look at the energy of an obstacle, it feels yeah. like, oh my God, I'm stuck and I'm never going to get out of it. Or now I've taken two steps backwards, just like you said. So if we can somehow get ourselves out of the thought process, what would you recommend people that if, when you hit an obstacle, what do you do? Uh, I would say, and this is not easy and it's a, a practice that takes time, but literally when you bump up against something, taking that moment to get excited about it, like, oh, 
I'm experiencing friction right now. And I know that friction is what helps me grow. I know that being uncomfortable is where growth happens. And I know that that's how I surmount this. Um, just because that's what logically, that's everything we've described thus far. You know, you can't grow without um, some something initiating it. So it's like, as soon as I hit an obstacle or as soon as I start to feel uncomfortable, I'm like, oh, I'm excited because that means um, something, some change will be occurring from this. And it might, it's gonna be uncomfortable, but that's what you have to expect. And in that way, it almost starts to change mentally. Like you, you even choose how you get to feel about things. Like you don't have to unconsciously be uncomfortable. I'm like, oh, I'm, co I'm consciously aware that this is, um, you know, not, I don't feel like super comfortable, but I can still be excited about it in a way, or I can still reflect on it with gratitude. And I think um, the gratitude aspect is the most important thing in the world, because that's how you really begin to change how things feel. Because uh, it's just impossible to feel grateful and to feel like angry and upset at the same time or to feel um I don't know that sense of like deep discomfort to, to the point where it's like rattling you you know it's just you can't it's it's really difficult to feel those two things at once so that would be like my recommendation on how to when every time you come up against something new it's like get excited because you're about to grow you're about to get closer to what you whatever you're trying to do in life or whoever you're trying to become um it's getting you closer, even if it seems really roundabout. Like, uh, I'm trying to think of a good example, but like, think like, even, I don't know, even like a car crash or something could be something that really initiates a ton of growth and a ton of healing and a ton of self-reflection if you let it be that and you make that choice and you find ways to be grateful for the various things that are occurring. Right. So, I mean, you made some really great points and it's, you know, it does, allow us to connect our obstacles allow us to connect with that higher version of ourselves because otherwise we are on autopilot if we didn't have any obstacles we'd be like okay right we're just going through our day this organized pattern brush my teeth take a shower go to work take care of the kids you know and it just becomes repetitive but you're right, obstacles can bring excitement <laughs> yeah. if we see them that way. Like, okay, what am I going to learn from this? What can I do with this in my life yeah. and, and grow from it? So, uh, And I guess actually, just one quick thing to add on that point. Yeah. It's like you're going to have an obstacle no matter what. Because if it yeah. turns into that, then it's uh, something we call a midlife crisis. Like you're so <laughs> bored with your lack of obstacles that it's now a crisis. And it's like, you're gonna, you may as well choose where you're headed, who you want to be, where you want to go. And, you know, be okay with all the obstacles because they're going to come no matter what. You know, it turns into depression then because you're, everything is so monotonous. It's not, it's like, you're not, don't feel like you're going anywhere. Um, so it's like, you're, there's no actual option to not have obstacles. <laughs> it's, I think it's when you get um, attached to them emotionally, okay, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. That's when you um, start to feel all those things, right? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. obstacles can be triggers from the past. But again, like Victoria said, we're learning lessons. And, you know, sometimes, Victoria, I don't know about you, but I found myself in the same cycle trying to learn the same thing again right. and again, right? Have you ever found that, sure. you know, like the yeah. universe is saying, listen, Victoria, yes. <laughs> no, get this so right, girl. <laughs> I, have two, I wish I had less examples of that. <laughs> um, but with that, that's one of the things that I've learned, like, just over my 29 years on this planet is I will be presented with the same lesson over and over until I learn it. So it's also in a big way, like not an option to, for me anyway. I don't know if it's, everybody's life is the same, but for me, it's like, if I don't learn the lesson, I'm going to be presented with it in a different scenario with a different, I, I mean, I think one, um, one example that's like, can be really pre prevalent in people's life is creating the same relationship over and over. And you, there's such a range of ways that can happen. It could be like, you know, the, the, the woman that continues to choose abusive partners, but it's a cycle and it's like, until you learn the lesson meant to, and I think a lot of times the lesson is self-worth. Like until you learn self-worth, you will literally continue to create the same situation over and over. And I can say that for myself, not with uh, relationship partners, but like other relationships, like a coach and uh, yeah, and, and like a boyfriend and a coach that I was meant to learn my self-worth through those situations. But until I did, I was going to keep creating this, that same situation. Oh yeah, I mean, I agree. <laughs> 
I agree. I, I completely agree. I mean, you know, I think that, um, you know, I feel like there are ways that even right now with the pandemic, right, it is an obstacle for many because a lot of people are out of work. A lot of people can't put food on the table or whatever their situation is, especially childcare. You know, if they're going back to work now that schools are going virtual, whatever it is, but it seems like a very interesting and challenging time where it is, um, this pandemic is an obstacle. And, you know, we want to, um, you know, help you guys get through it and see it. Okay, there is maybe a bigger picture out there. There is something else. Like, think about all the things that good that has come from the pandemic. You know, right. I mean, I'm sure you have a long list. I do, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. and I feel like if we can think about those and focus on those and figure out a solution rather than dwelling on the obstacle, I think that that will also uh, help us grow, right? And come out of this. Um, but we can definitely make our obstacles our path and there's uh, many ways. And one of the things that I've always done when I've hit an obstacle is breathe. And it just allows me to just calm my mind because you can easily go into a sweat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I mean, and I've done it like twice now. And, and I recall, oh my gosh, my website, you know, I'm not a technical person. Uh -huh. I have to have somebody that is helping me. And so if something goes um, haywire on my website, I'm like, oh God, please, please. <laughs> But do I learn something from it every single time? Yes, I do. I definitely do. And it does help me grow. And sometimes it's like, I really don't want to grow in this side. You know, <laughs> I'd rather grow here. Can I pick yeah. and choose, you know, <laughs> where yeah. I want to grow? <laughs> but I think we all have our obstacles. And um, I feel like today, Victoria, um, you know, has presented us with such amazing information. Well, and what I'd like to do with some time that we have remaining is, well, actually, Victoria, is there anything that you'd like to add or say? Because everybody that's listening, I know they want, um, right now, everybody needs some form of compassion and uplifting, you know? Yeah. And it would be great if you could, if you have anything you'd like to add. Yeah, there's a couple things that just came to mind as you were speaking. And the first is that um, times are really tough. And whatever anyone is going through, whatever you feel, you're justified in feeling it. It's none of this is to say, like, ignore your feelings. You shouldn't feel that way. Like, that's that's not it at all. Um, you should feel however you, you feel. You know, your feelings are there to guide you and, and teach you. And they're meant to be felt. They're not meant to be um, shoved in some deep, dark crevice because that's creating more of a problem down the road. Uh, but I do think that even feelings of despair and, um, you know, just feelings of, you know, how am I going to get through this? Those are some of the bigger questions that begin to get to the root of whatever it is that leads to a person maybe being unhappy uh, in the long term or be, leads to, you know, like I'll give myself as an example again, a self-worth example. I think a lot of, I, I was in situations and I've been in situations throughout my life where um, I did feel destitute, destitute or I did feel like a sense of despair and it might have extended over uh, months. I was in a particular situation with, um, yeah, just a training situation that really I hated wrestling. I didn't want to wrestle anymore. I just was not enjoying any part of my life for months and months, but it was starting to ask, well, why and what is wrong and how, what is really happening here um, that helped me get to the root of who I am and what the actual issue was. Because I think although um, everyone is justified in anything that they feel, if you choose that the root is always yourself, you'll get to a place um, where like outside forces can't shake you. And there's no, and now because of that situation, because of everything I learned and the, just continuing to ask myself, why, why do I feel this way? 
why, what do I need to change? Like, what is the real issue? You know, that's not, it was like deeper, deeper, deeper. Then now I'm at a point in my, um, who I am as a person that I can't be shaken by any outside force. There's no situation that's going to, I mean, I can't, I'm, I won't say that. I won't say there's no situation that's going to like rock me to my core, but um, I just know I'll be able to always recover and, and find the good and grow and be better because of it, because I know who I am because of these situations where I really had to, it's like you really get shaken to your root. And that's what you need to find is your root. <laughs> and, and then you, you need to, you know, dig your roots deep and plant them so firmly into the ground that you're grounded. And then from that point, you can start to, you know, grow and grow up and up and up and out and out and out and be, have healthy leaves and healthy branches and um, because your roots are healthy. And it's sometimes getting shaken to those roots that, you know, allows uh, that, that health and that. Um, just to even make sure that the soil you're surrounding yourself in is good. Like, is the soil the problem? And when I say soil, I just mean environment. Like, I, I need to change my environment. I need to change my soil. I just need to really be aware of every single piece of my life and let it be intentional. Um, and it's that being shaken up that makes us take a really close, deep look at things that you're like, oh, this this piece is off. Like there's a big rock here that needs to be removed. Um, and I've been ignoring it. I've been sitting on top of it for 20 years. <laughs> and you know, that could be so many things for so many different people. So I just, I say all that to say like you, you should be aware of your feelings and you should, um, and pretty much investigate them and be willing to reflect on them in such a way that you're, you, you're, you're just able to gain and, and go deeper and deeper into who you are till you're, whoever you're intending to be, you know? Yeah. Well, did you know that we as humans suppress 90% of our emotions? I didn't know that, but I can believe it. And I might've been at 92%. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know. I um, And I believe that solely because when I work with clients and even, you know, if I look at myself and my life, I can see all the repressed anger and all the repressed control. You know, when you lose control as a child, like you can see it, how a person turns out and the diseases that show up within them, you could tell their whole childhood history based on right. that because all these emotions are flooded within the cells of their body and actually your body speaks right? Your body speaks on everything you've experienced and what you're holding on to. And that's why it's great that you brought up that point that be able to feel when an obstacle comes along, what are the feelings and the emotions behind it? Because once you can allow yourself to feel because as children, you're never allowed to feel anything. Even as adults, you don't want you know, everybody hides their face if they're crying. I mean, every time we're watching a movie, I'm like, oh my God, and the kids know, oh, mom's crying, you know? <laughs> and so I'm like, I can't hide it anymore. I just get tears, yeah. floods of tears, you know? Uh -huh. If we can express our feelings, it would be so beautiful. It's funny, um, this thought came into my head. My husband the other day, you know, a dog, right? We have a, we have a beautiful, beautiful multi-poo. Her name is Jasmine. And as one of my clients say, she is my doctor. And so she, she is so adorable. She's eight pounds of fluff. Okay. And she, um, my husband looks at her one day and she goes, he goes, something happened or whatever and he goes oh she's so emotional you know and I'm like Hello, <laughs> what about me <laughs> so, <funny. laughs> so am I but I don't think you care when I'm emotional you know what I mean uh -huh. it's funny how we react to our animals and we mm -hmm. know when they're emotional we know when you know they're happy we know their emotions but yet, when a human, another human is emotional, it's like, oh, no, 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 right? Or right, has yeah. feelings. And so, yeah, you're right. I think we need to, whatever is coming up for you, let's do a, um, a short healing process. Let's mm -hmm. do that, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know what you're doing, but I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'll just guide everybody, okay? okay. So 
let's go ahead and whatever obstacles you're going through. So go ahead and take a nice deep breath in, nice breath out, and go ahead and close your eyes. Okay, everyone who's listening, everyone who's going to be watching later, just go ahead and go through this process. It is a process. So just allow your mind and your body to just relax. Okay, and we're just going to clear some of these energies that are coming up, whatever obstacles you're facing right now. But let me go ahead and ground everybody's energies first. <sighs> And whatever is going on in your life right now, whatever you see as an obstacle, whatever you see as a challenge, I want you to tap into that. Maybe it's your child, maybe it's your spouse, maybe it's your grandchildren, maybe it's you who's going through something. Maybe it's because of what the world is going through, whatever you're holding on to, I want you to access that specific obstacle. Anything that's holding you back, anything that's creating discomfort within your body, and I want you to take a nice deep breath in and a nice breath out. As your mind and your body relax, let's go through and clear your energy field. Of all the energies that you're holding on to, whether it's yours or other people's, dislodging and disintegrating all the thoughts, feelings, emotions, beliefs, because all of this could be impacting you right now. Let's go ahead and work on that part of the brain that helps with cognitive thinking and decision making and focus. Let's clear whatever energies that, that those parts of your brain is holding on to. Bringing in the frequencies of clarity, solutions, focus, compassion, light, love, creativity, accessibility, knowledge, guidance. Let's bring in those frequencies up from top of your crown, allowing those energies to come in right through the top of your head and allowing them to infuse through your nervous system all the way down to the tailbone of your spine, invigorating all the cells in your body And all those old feelings are just dissolving away. All the triggers feel so minimal. All the obstacle feels so minimal that they're almost not even there. And take a nice deep breath in and a nice breath out. Grounding your energies. And so it is. Thank you to you. Thank you to your guide team. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. You feel grounded. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to thank everyone for joining us here today. And thank you to Victoria for being our special guest. Thank you, thank you so much. And also guys, the Global Gathering is coming up in the next two weeks, I believe, um, August 24th or 26th. It's usually on a Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. If you can join us, I would highly recommend it. It is an amazing brand new platform where I bring healers together to provide healings for an hour and a half. 
So come join us. It's so much fun. This time we have some music. I know I've had music in the past, but this time it's the Buckby House uh, Band, I believe, and they are amazing. So do come and join us if you want to hear them and get some healings. And so if you need to get in touch with me, you could do so at Ananda, the number four, life.com. So I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>